that's the way it goes. Now, football practice continues. We know much of who Michigan is going to field on the last day of August against Fresno State. We could come up with a depth chart. It would be close, be close to what would it, over 90%, maybe, I don't know about 100%, but it'd be over 90%. But there's always, you know, guys that rise up the depth chart and guys that, you know, get the early playing time. And, you know, there, there was, um, there was a time that, not that I wasn't looking for news, but I wasn't looking every single day under every rock for every little who's, you know, making a move. And then the, the, the season would happen and I would, you know, say, Oh, wow, who's that or whatever. And, you know, that, that was as exciting as anything else, but you know, we want to know now, you know, who's going to be out there and we've got a, a pretty good guess, but there's also a reality check. I've been talking with some folks that have gone to practice and the reality check is I was like, well, how's the defense look? And they're like, they look pretty good. And anyway, like anybody that would go to practice and stand on the sideline and watch Michigan play would know that Jay Sean Barham, the transfer from Maryland, it looks like a, an outstanding player. He's got uh, great speed. He's big. And he's going to be playing in front of a defensive line that could be, uh, certainly you would say right now, is one of the very best, maybe the best, in the country, and if you're an inside linebacker, I mean, a linebacker flowing around, that's exactly what you want. So it's a perfect fit, and you expect a good season from uh, Jay Sean Barham. Uh, Derek Moore, who was uh, outstanding uh, last year in rotation and then had a big game in the Rose Bowl, was in there on the, the final play when they stopped Jalen Milrow. You know, and I was um, – talking with somebody that was uh, watching the defensive line. He said Derek Moore. Derek Moore, when he was a true freshman and was in for spring, I remember watching him at the spring game, and and Derek Moore looked like a professional uh, defensive end at that time. Well, it's just it, – it's another one of those things when you're you're watching practice that stands out. Derek Moore looks like an NFL edge rusher – he has looked like that. He continues to look like that. And you know, if you're looking for somebody, say, you know what? Give me somebody you think is going to have a great year. I, Derek Moore, I think, is going to have a great year. I, I do think that. I believe that. And uh, we go ahead and, and, and put me down for number eight in the maize and blue to have a, a big year. But the thing about defense that was emphasized to me more than once is that this is not back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s where you know coaches would line these guys up and there would be a lot of hitting going on. And now they, they streamline this process and there's, there's thud tackling, but they're not taking guys to the ground. So that is something to keep in mind. I was the offense in front of the defense, vice versa, who had the better days, all of this kind of stuff. Oh, it's even. Oh, they're just saying that. When it comes to the defense and, you know, trying to get a gauge on things, it is something to remember. You know, you're not taking ball carriers to the ground. So, you know, that if you're a running back, you know, how you're breaking tackles, do you really know? You know, you get the, you can get a lot out of it, but, you know, it's not quite the same. But so something to keep in mind. I don't know. Uh it was the same thing talking about the offensive line. I was like, well, how are they gelling? I was putting that question out there. And somebody that played offensive line said, anybody that knows about offensive line play knows that you need time together to gel. And talking about a few, a, a week or two in the practice saying, oh, they've, they've, you know, they gel. They look like they're, you know, they're going to be great. They got the pieces there, but we're not going to know about that offensive line until Texas. You know, maybe if they're giving up some, uh, you know, giving up some free rushers or something, or or struggle against Fresno State. I'm not expecting that, but we're going to know uh, against Texas, and that's why this year having uh, Texas right off the bat, we're going to know. Yeah, we're going to know about the offensive line. We're going to know about the quarter. We're going to know about everything. Texas, you know, the second game. We're not going to have to wait until game six or seven, it's going to be on. And we're going to know 
what's uh, happened there. So the old line needs time to gel. So I, I don't know if there's nothing against anybody that is throwing out uh, practice uh, tidbits and things like that. But anybody that's talking about, well, uh, you know, the defense looks great and, and the offensive line smalling guys, you, know, you, you just keep that in back of your mind that they're not bringing guys to the ground and an offensive line, uh, certainly one with five new components, they have to work in tandem. It's like the, uh, I don't know, who is it? Like, like the Rockettes. You don't, you don't just go out on stage and start, you know, kicking your legs out with everyone. You might be good and everything else, but you got to work in unison with your partner. And, in you know, the, the weak link is, you know, you got to be at the, that's going to be your strongest point in there. Whatever that uh, phrase is, your your weakest link is, you know, could take the whole offensive line down, that kind of thing. But, you know, encouraged about what uh, is going on with uh, with those players. And one person told me that watched Michigan's offensive line that uh, if he – I said, well, give me something. He said he thinks that, that Josh Preeb – the transfer from Northwestern right now would be considered Michigan's best offensive lineman from what you've seen. Now that's somebody that's played football and uh, played at Michigan knows a little bit about offensive line and told me that. So Josh pre now you could say, is that good news or bad news that a, a transfer at guard is your best player. And that's going to be whatever you want to make that. You look at the rest of the guys, if if somebody said uh, Crippen, you'd say, wow, what about the tackles? You know, anybody that you put there, great for him, but what about the other guys? So, but Preeb is good, and anybody that I have spoken with so far, or anything that I've seen from Trevor McHugh or Josh Henschke in the Maze and Blue Review, Josh is putting out practice reports like uh, almost every other day, and, and, and anytime you see you know, the it seems like a consensus. Anybody, nobody said, you know, Preeb is going to take a little while, or you know, Preeb doesn't look that everybody says he looks impressive too. So, uh, as much as you, the the transfer portal, you know, Michigan had what 10 players in the transfer portal, and at one point, you know, I was calling on the Magnificent Seven, and they just kept going. And you know, they ended up, uh, I think, nine of them. The only guy that didn't really get any time was the you know, a uh, place kicker that transferred from Mississippi State. The rest all contributed. The two that they have right now, Barham and and Preeb, are everything that you would want in football players that are coming in. And I would say that both of those guys are total impact players for Michigan. So that's what I've seen on the offensive uh, um, uh, from uh, football uh, from people that I've spoken with about practice. We'll get to some of your points and, and questions about things that are going on with uh, with Michigan football. I know people are are worried about recruiting, and, and I can't do anything to, to tell you not to worry. And, and I'm not sure you shouldn't worry when you've got the three commits and you're defending champs. And I think the reason is, is you had, and I think this is the same reason why you don't, may not have as many transfer portal players in right now for spring practice is that it took a while with uh, Harbaugh not leaving uh, until almost the end of January. You remember that is January the 24th was um, that announcement on that Wednesday that he was bolting to go pro. You know, there was a holding pattern if you're a high school player. So that affected Recruiting. There's no doubt about that. It also affected the transfer portal. And then Sheryl Moore having to put together a staff. And then now that Michigan, they one thing that we know that they they did, whether it was differently or more, it had a more intense background check, whatever the the uh company that they hired to do background checks because they've had some issues obviously over the years with some of the staff members or otherwise. And some of the stuff you, you could say, yeah, how about a simple background check and other things you, you can't tell, but that sound, if somebody uh, asked me, Hey, was it a good idea that Michigan did a real thorough uh, head to toe background check on coaches that they're going to hire? I'd say, yeah, 
Now you might've said, no, just go to the rubber stamp and bring them in. Like whatever. And so that took a while. And then they had, you know, the issue with the one defensive lineman that they finally, I mean, they've only had the staff together for just over a week or so, or maybe it's been a little bit longer than that, but not long with Espo uh, Esposito as the, the defensive line coach. And, not that you have to have everybody together, but now that it's in place and, you know, so uh, I'm not making any excuses. I'm basically just, uh, I think I'm just telling you what you know, but sometimes when you just hear people uh, screaming online about, Oh, Michigan's falling off. They can't recruit. They can't, you know, uh, what's war doing with the NIL. I mean, these are things that you see constantly on Twitter. Well, it was whoever was in there was going to, you got to ramp up, you know, just yeah, even though the, the continuity, not just boom, you know, snap it in. And, and uh, I, I would think that if we are sitting here and, you know, I know there's commitment watch and, you know, there's guys that are coming in. This is the big weekend and there are a lot of players in uh, I, I'm not, forecasting any uh, commitment in the next day or two. Just as I've watched it over the last couple of years, like June, June and certainly the beginning of July, that's when a lot of the players make their decisions. So we're a long ways away from that. If we're, if I'm sitting here on the 1st of July and I'm looking over at Michigan's recruiting class, and there's not any players there besides the ones that they have now, and maybe just a couple more. I think I'll go ahead and push the panic button at that point. But you might want to, you know, I, I wouldn't say you might want to push it sooner than that. Let's not push the panic button on recruiting until July 1st. Uh, you want to graze it right now? Uh, you do whatever you want. I'm telling you where uh, where I am at. I also think with the transfer portal, we're going to wait till after spring. Michigan's going to be, there's going to be uh, some outgoing. And then, yeah, Michigan, I would think there's going to be some ingoing there. So we're going to have to wait on the uh, portal when it comes to that. The thing that it gets asked a lot, and maybe somebody has already asked it. I haven't read any of the feedback yet. But the question about will Michigan go in the portal for a quarterback? And that is maybe, maybe they will. That's yet to be determined. I think that if Michigan is going into the transfer portal after spring football, that is cause for alarm. Now, not, you know, hey, oh my God, but it is, I don't know. I didn't want to, I didn't want to oversell it or undersell it, but you've got a team that we can all look at that they could put a starting lineup out there of, you know, they're all 22 and it looks like it could compete in the big 10. I know Ohio state's probably looks better on paper, but Michigan's right there. And considering what they've done the last three years, I, I, I wouldn't count them out with the exception of the uncertainty with the quarterback position. And if Michigan goes through an entire spring ball and after spring ball, they are going out into the portal. then I would think that that would be cause for alarm. You may not. Uh, and and depending on who they get, there's you know can be a lot of different situations where somebody's pretty good, but a young player that just gets beat out, and you know he thinks you know I want to take a shot and I could play. Uh, Michigan would be a great landing spot, so uh, you know you could talk yourself into that it wouldn't be cause for alarm. But uh, I'm just telling you that I think it would be that. The, the question mark that is the quarterback position at Michigan, wherever you think that question mark is, if they're out in the portal afterwards, that question mark gets a lot bigger. I don't think, is there any argument about that? And again, it depends who they get. But so we'll have to see on that. I'm just telling you how I see it. It's not all, you know, bouquets and flowers about everything that's going on with Michigan. And I think a lot of people serve that up. And there's lots of things to be happy about, and I'm this positive. I believe I'm is I'm a glass half full person, but I also want to tell you that you know that's how I sit and uh, how I see things. 
there are some people that are so close to the football program and, you know, they don't want to say anything like that would be considered like, Oh, that's a negative. Well, okay. That's fine. I mean, I, I don't play on the team. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm trying to give you the information so, you know, you can make your own determination. I think there's a lot of people that are, are, are feeding you, you know, a lot of maize and blue, you know, that you just want all the maize and blue sunshine and everybody's like, this is great. Or they serve you up the maize and blue excuses so you can use it when anybody's coming at you and say, hey, well, what about recruiting? What about the quarterback? And you're like, eh, everything's great. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not, um, I'm not there with that. So that's what I'm thinking. I, I think the other thing is, is that the coaches and, you hear this all the time with any team, but specifically at Michigan. Michigan's a big leadership team. Who's going to be your leaders and you know your senior leaders? Who's going to be the captains kind of thing? Who's going to lead this team? That's always important. But when you think about the talent, there's no question that Michigan, they won the national championship last year. They had a boatload of talent, and they really had great leaders. And you, you'd start with J.J., but you'd go to Blake Corum. We've heard all these guys. Both of the uh, guards in Zinner and Keegan, who were, were captains. That doesn't happen all the time on football teams. Those guys were great leaders on the offensive line. You go over on the defensive side, and Jenkins and St. Restill, across the board, great players, but, but great leaders. And so there is that void of, of talent. They've got the talent there. But some of the guys, and sometimes it is just a natural progression where you think, hey, great player, this guy will be a leader. And you say, oh, Will Johnson's probably going to be a leader. And, and, uh, and Mason Graham, even though he's a quiet, you know, you'd rather have him just, you know, show the way. And I heard Mason Graham already this spring said, yeah, you know, he's, he's making a, an effort to be more of a, a vocal leader. And, you know, because he is somebody that, you know, is, um, if not their best player, you know, one, certainly one of their best players. So it, it's just something. And, and that's another thing that is developing through spring and something that the Michigan coaches really want. It's having that offensive line hanging out all the time, every day, and having that camaraderie and knowing that what these guys, what makes your guy next to you tick and everything else. It's important. You know, how important? I don't know. I, mean, I know it's not something that you can look at as a recruiting angle or somebody that, you know, these are general coaching points that I'm not sure that, you know, your your fan base is thinking, no, those things are fine. There's, you know, that all just happens. They just go out there and, and, and more will just wave a magic wand and they'll get leadership and these guys will be hanging out together. They will all like one another. And they will be ready to go next year when uh, the curtain goes up on the 2024 season. Those are the things that uh, I'm thinking about as it comes down to Michigan and the spring game as we are now less than two weeks away. Oh, here we go. I'll get some of the feedback in here. Here's somebody talking about a Ohio State running back going into the, the, uh, the portal. I, I did see that. That's right. Uh, guys go into the portal. I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I, I, maybe I need to get more into like, ooh, as soon as somebody leaves a program or somebody hits the portal, it's like, would this guy be somebody that Michigan wants? I don't think I'm, I'm running back right now. Out of all of the things that, that Michigan's looking for, I don't think they're interested at all in a running back. I think they could be interested in a quarterback. I think that they could be interested in a bigger wide receiver. I think they could be interested in a defensive back of safety or corner, but I don't think they're interested in a running back. And I know you're just putting it out there. You weren't even saying it. It's just, it's Ohio state and maybe they're getting weakened by somebody going into the portal or it's just news, but there you go. Any of the other young studs other than Etta turning heads. I hear Roderick Pierce's name, Roderick Pierce, the third. I hear his name coming up. A lot. I don't know if you consider Zeke Barry as a, a young stud or not, but when the starting defense is out there, it is um, obviously number two 
at one of the corners and number seven, Makari Page at safety, uh, Jaden McBurrows and Zeke Berry have been with the ones a lot. So again, I don't know if that makes you think uh, if he's young or not. Corey's just going to make a point about the offense. If they can move the ball, we will win it again with how good this defense is. Mm. Well, yeah, move the there's, there's, I would think you'd need a little bit more than that. You don't only have time for a sentence or two. I like that, you know. Yes, if Michigan can find a I would put in there if Michigan can find a quarterback that can deliver the ball without turning it over because I believe in the run game, then I believe that they're going to be in the mix for a Big Ten championship in a playoff. So is this, are, are we so far off? Move the ball without turning it over? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of there with you, Corey, on that. 